Hey, I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and here I am back with Barn Sprite number four. Where we left off last time, I got the engine running and I drove it around the parking lot a little bit, but it still does not have working brakes or a working clutch pedal. I've done a couple things since you've last seen this car. I put in the water temp and oil pressure gauge. I put in the little hose that goes from the heater valve to the heater core, and I also got a radiator cap. The goal for today is to try to get this car as drivable as possible and as complete as possible. So let's get started. To replace the master cylinders, I like to remove the entire pedal assembly. It's just a lot easier to do it that way. Once the pedal assembly is out, it's really easy to replace the master cylinder. Just two bolts hold the master cylinder in. And then the old master cylinder can just be tapped out. Looks like I have some bonus bolts in here. I'm sure these were lost a very long time ago. So I'll just get this cleaned out. Putting the new master cylinder in is just a reverse of this process. Just set it in there. Make sure your push rods get into the ports and fasten it in with two bolts. I have the new master cylinder in. Now I can put the pedal assembly back into the car. I have the master cylinder mounted back in place and I have the brake lines hooked up. Before I put any fluid in it, I want to replace all of the hoses. This car uses a hard line all the way down to the clutch slave, so there is no hose for the clutch. But there are three hoses for the brakes, and I want to replace those now before I put any fluid in them. In the rear of the car is just one brake hose, and then it's hard line out to both of the wheels. This is the one part of the brakes that you can always guarantee that you should replace if your car's been sitting a long time. Even if the hose looks like it's in good condition, it's probably swollen up on the inside. And even though the master cylinder might have enough power to force brake fluid through the hose, because this is shut off, the fluid may not return back to the master cylinder, therefore locking up your brakes. So it doesn't matter, even if these hoses look in good shape, if you have an older car, if it's been sitting for a while, just due to age, you will need to replace these brake hoses quite often to keep your car in good condition. It's kind of weird, the last barn sprite that I did, uh, it looked wet up here as well. I don't know if the grease that might come out of the rear ends turns weird when it was sitting in the barn setting or what, but yeah, all the barn sprites have had wet grease right above the rear end here. That's kind of weird. It's nowhere else on the car. So I wonder if it's some kind of reaction with the differential fluid that it looks like this. Anyways, to easily remove the brake hose, I like to just cut it off. Now I can actually put a socket on here and spin it off really easily and I don't have to worry about stripping the nuts. So that I don't break the pipe right here, I'm going to wiggle this back and forth Make sure that it comes loose. I don't want to end up just rotating the nut and end up twisting the pipe and breaking it off. Now that it's nice and loose, I can unscrew it. Installing the new hose is a reverse of that process. You do have to spin this side in up here first because you cannot rotate this end if this end is fixed. So you do have to install this end into the T first. And when you're fitting this end, don't forget that you need to include a crush washer. Now I can move on to the front two hoses. To do the front brake hoses, I will have to take the wheels off. Here's the brake hose right here, just like in the rear. 
I'm going to cut it off. Now the replacement of this hose works the same way as it did in the rear. I'm going to save my crush washer for later. I'm going to wiggle the nut back and forth like before. Sometimes you have too much crud on these nuts that it's hard to get a wrench on there. So just grab a wire brush real quick. Get all that crud off of there. It'll save yourself a lot of headache. Just like on the rear brakes, you must install the short end first because this threads right into the wheel cylinder. You won't be able to spin the hose if you affix this side first. And don't forget your crush washer. Now I just need to repeat this process on the other side of the car. With the brake lines replaced, I've now put fluid in the master cylinder. I'm going to start by getting the clutch to work. So I need to go down by the slave cylinder, which is underneath the car next to the transmission. And I'm going to bleed all the air out of the line starting from there. Here we are underneath the car. This is the slave cylinder for the clutch right here. Now the bleeder is on the top of the slave cylinder. You can barely see it at the tip of my finger right there. So you can access that by reaching your hand up above the cylinder here, or there is an access hole right there, and you can access that from inside the car. I usually find that it's easier to do it from underneath the car. I just barely cracked open the bleeder with my 7 16 wrench up there, and already brake fluid is coming out of the bleeder, so that's a good sign. That means that the brake fluid is coming down from the master cylinder and flowing down here. If you want to, this technique is called gravity bleeding. And if you leave your bleeder cracked open just a small amount, it will just drain the fluid out, releasing all of the air from the system. This is not as foolproof as other ways of bleeding, but if you're the only one here and you don't have any other tools, this is one way that you can do it in a pinch. Now that I had the slave cylinder bled, I'm going to go inside, push the pedal, and we'll see if the piston moves in and out, disengaging the clutch. Okay, I think that was working. It first felt like it was maybe getting hung up. Okay, I just went back and looked at the video. What happened is the piston was pushed forward, but since it hasn't been moved in so long, it got stuck in the out position a little bit. And then as I applied more pressure, it pushed the piston a little bit more. And that a bit, little bit of movement was enough to free it, to allow it to retract. Once it had moved forward and back one time, it was then freed up and it has smooth, easy motion now in and out. So it looks like this slave cylinder is going to work. If I wanted to make it a little more reliable, I could take it off and put a cheap rebuild kit. They're only a couple dollars. So now that the clutch is working, let's move on to the brakes. The rear brakes on these cars are really nice because the bleeder is right here. It's facing back towards the back of the car. So here's the, this is the spring right here. So this nipple is actually facing towards the rear of the car, which makes it really easy to get to without even having to take the wheel off. One thing that I like to do before I start bleeding the brake is take the bleeder off. And with the bleeder off, I want to make sure that it's actually open. Looking at it right now, it looks like it's clogged full of stuff. So if I were to try to bleed the brakes with this bleeder, nothing's going to come out. So I need to take this over to the wire wheel and take a small piece of wire like this, stick it up in there and try to clean out as much stuff from the middle of that bleeder as I possibly can. I have the bleeder cleaned up now. Two good ways of checking to see if it is cleared out. One is by blowing through it, seeing if the air comes out of the little port. And another way is by using a flashlight to see if that port is open. 
If the bleeder was clogged up, you would not see light from the flashlight coming in through that little hole. I'm gonna take all the other bleeders off the car, clean them up just like this. I have my vacuum bleeder hooked up to the bleeder valve. So I'm gonna start sucking on it. We'll see if we can get brake fluid back here. Okay, I've run into a problem that's going to stop the work for right now. There's a puddle of brake fluid on the floor, but right beneath that is not one of the brake bleeders. I started bleeding the brakes and I hit the brake pedal to see if I was getting any pressure and I ended up blowing the brake line. So this is the brake line that runs to the left rear wheel. You can see the brake fluid leaking down the axle tube there. It's late at night right now and the parts stores are not open. So this is as far as I'm going to be able to go on the brakes for this time. I need to change the oil filter on this car for two reasons. One, because the oil filter is really old as is the oil and two, because the filter housing is leaking. I think it's leaking around where the gasket on the top of the canister meets the oil filter housing. It just takes a 5 8 inch socket to remove this, so I'm going to loosen it and drop the canister down where I have access to the oil filter and the seals. Already I can see where my problem was, and you see the little bit of gasket right there. The o-ring that fits up into this groove right here was not set in correctly, and it was actually pinched right here, so I'm sure that the oil was just leaking out where the o-ring was not compressed properly above the canister. Another thing to make sure to check when you are replacing your oil filter, sometimes these o-rings can get jammed up in there and they don't appear that they're there. You may have thought that the previous owner might have left it out. And sometimes people will stack multiple o-rings up inside of here. And that's just gonna cause it to leak. So make sure that you don't have any o-rings hiding up inside this groove. Make sure that you go in with a pick and pick out your old o-ring and check for any extra ones that might be up there. This one I can just grab by hand, but you can see it's falling apart. So I'm going to need to grab a pick or a screwdriver or something to get into this groove and get this out of here. Now I'm gonna take my pick up there, make sure that there isn't any more rubber up there. Looks good, I can see the aluminum housing up inside this groove. So I know there isn't another O-ring hiding up in there. Here's my new oil filter. And I have a new O-ring to set up in there. I'm gonna to try to put this in place before I set the canister up there. You want to be careful when you're putting that in that you don't get it twisted and that it's setting flat all the way around. Now I can put my canister back up. I've got it wiped off real good so I can check for leaks later. Once I start the engine up, I'll look down here, see if this is leaking anymore. But I'm pretty sure I've solved my problem. Well, that's as far as I'm going to go on Barn Sprite number four this time. If you want to see more videos on this car, click the subscribe button and you'll get notified when I upload another video.